So in the last year or so, we've put our nose into the grindstone and we have reviewed a total of 16 high-end coolers. But all of that testing up to this point has been done on Intel's 13th gen CPUs. And that got a lot of you guys asking and me wondering, are the best of the best coolers on the Intel side also the best to cool AM5 CPUs? And now that is exactly what this video is all about. To answer that question, we've assembled our top 10 heat sinks up to this point, which cover a pretty wide range of price points from entry level all the way up past 100 US dollars. Oh, and we've added in a 240 millimeter AIO just for good measure. You can find links to buy all of these in the description down below. Those are being tested on not one, but three different AMD processors, the 7950X, a 7700X, and the 7600X. If you're wondering about where the X3D chips land, well, we've proven those produce much less heat than the regular variants. So if a cooler performs well in these tests that you're about to see, it'll run even better on the X3D version. And with those 10 air coolers, along with those three processors, we sunk in over 200 hours of testing and we had to analyze almost 15,000 data points to get this video out. So with that being said, I mean, some bills have got to get paid. So here's a message from this video sponsor. This is the last time you're spending money on the power supply. Why? Because this is for a lifetime with all possible upgrades. Mm, why? Be quiet and enjoy the Dark Power Pro 13. Why? With their signature aluminum case and silent wings fan, individually sleeved cables with cable combs for that first class experience, with two PCIe 5.0 600 watt 12 volt high power cables. Now that's intimidating. Why? 80 plus titanium efficiency with an overclocking key. So truly a power supply for now and the beyond. Check it out below. Now actually cooling these AMD CPUs is easier said than done. That's because AMD equipped them with such a thick IHS or internal heatsink that it actually acts as a bottleneck when trying to properly cool these things down. That's because it tends to soak up a ton of heat and normally that's completely okay, but in this situation, it keeps that heat close to the processor dies instead of quickly transmitting it towards the cooler's base plate. The other issue is AMD's layout of the processor package itself. Instead of being centered, the IO dies location pushes the CCDs, the hottest running components on the CPU towards the southern end of the IHS and away from the center point where most coolers focus their optimal mounting pressure. Which is why you're about to see in the next couple of months a bunch of coolers being released with offset mounts. You can actually learn a lot more about this entire thing in a comprehensive video I did right up here. It's almost like, I guess, I don't want to say required, but you should really, really watch it before getting too far into this video or questioning any of the results. And speaking of questioning the results, all of our methodology is linked down below. If you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of how we tested these things, everything is written up there. So with that out of the way, let's start with the 7600X results. The first thing I wanted to mention right away is the scale of the charts you're going to see. It's more granular in order to visually separate one cooler from another. So it's not starting at zero. None of them are. And you can see that here with the Assassin 4, AK620 and Thermalright Frost Commander getting nearly identical results. Though the Commander gets a fair bit louder and a bit cooler too. Then there's the D15, Frost Spirit, V3 and Peerless Assassin grouped right together. Training blows depending on the decibel level. But seriously, there's only one degree at the very most separating these three, which falls well within our margin of error. So they're essentially going to deliver identical performance on this CPU. The same thing goes for the new Phantom Spirit and the Big Boy Assassin 3. They're both able to edge out every other air cooler, but only marginally. Still, when you consider how inexpensive the Phantom Spirit is, this is a huge win. Meanwhile, the Fuma 3 and Noctua U12A trail the pack by between 2 to 4 degrees, with the U12A able to deliver a bit better noise to cooling ratio at lower decibel levels, while the Fuma 3 really picks things up if its fans are running faster. Oh, and that 240mm AIO, well, it sits all the way down here, 
a good one and a half to two and a half degrees better than the best air coolers. Drilling down for a closer look at 38 decibels and you can see there's a razor thin margin of just 1.8 degrees separating most of these coolers. The only outliers are the U12A and FUMA 3 which are a few degrees hotter while the LT520 gets down to the low 73s. Does that 5 degree delta affect performance though? Well if we look at the U12A and FUMA 3 they start out around 5 5.33 gigahertz and top out just 50 megahertz higher, whereas the LT520 gets the absolute best clock speeds of between 5.4 gigahertz and 5.43 gigahertz. Meanwhile, all of the other coolers are clustered between those two points, with some being marginally better than the others. But remember the scale I talked about a few minutes ago, because the gap between the best and the worst here is just 75 megahertz. That means you can choose literally any cooler here for a 7600X and be guaranteed your CPU will be running at near peak clock speeds, regardless of whether it's chugging along at just over 80 degrees like the FUMA 3 or under 75 with the AIO, Phantom Spirit, Peerless Assassin and some of the others. Let's push things a bit with the 7700X and right from the get go the FUMA 3 and U12A struggle to get under 90 degrees at lower decibel levels, but they both pick up steam at 38 decibels and higher. The Frost Commander, Assassin 4 and AK620 are also neck and neck, at least until 40 dB, where the Assassin 4 starts to pull away a bit. Yet regardless of how you look at things, this isn't a good look for Deepcool's flagship, since it's being matched by heat sinks that cost a hell of a lot less. The Frost Spirit also puts on a good showing here. Yeah, it's beaten by the Peerless Assassin at some points, but then comes out ahead if you're okay with a bit higher noise levels. Then there's the best of the best, the Assassin 3, which beats pretty much everything, but it's actually edged out by the Phantom Spirit and D15, two coolers that get identical results, though at very different prices. The 240mm AIO also provides an interesting talking point here. While it was clearly superior on the 7600X, the Phantom and D15 give similar temperatures on a 7700X. So as heat loads increase, some coolers like the Phantom Spirit D15 and Assassin 3 really start to shine. As a matter of fact, all the thermal array coolers along with the AK620 provide an awesome blend of price and performance on the AM5 platform. Switching to clock speeds, we have a literal repeat of the 7600X results with the AK620, Frost Commander, Assassin 4, and Frost Spirit V3 all clustered together. Then there's the D15, Assassin 3, and Phantom Spirit running right up there with the LT520 AIO, while the Peerless Assassin acts like a bridge between those two groups and almost matches the Assassin 3's performance at 41 decibels and beyond. It's just incredible. Naturally, with the highest temperatures, the FUMA 3 and U12A also get the lowest clock speeds of the bunch. Context is important though, because the worst result here and the best result are separated by just 87 megahertz this time. So even though we're looking at temperatures that are up to 10 degrees higher than on the 7600X, performance is still largely unaffected. Of course, there's a separation between the good results and the best ones, but it's nothing that would perceptually affect performance. The 7950X, well that's a very different beast and the U12A smashes right into its 95 degree maximum most of the time. The FUMA 3 fares a lot better with it running under 95 degrees at just 38 decibels while the AK620 and Assassin 4 are effectively tied once again. Under that, the Assassin 3 and Frost Commander deliver exactly the same performance, though the Commander does have that extra gear with its louder fans, but I never ever want it running at those noise levels to begin with. The Peerless Assassin is ultra impressive here too, with a major sweet spot right between 37 and 39 decibels, where it pulls away from most of the other coolers here. And yet the Phantom Spirit gets even better numbers. And while yes, the AIO did get the best temperatures of the bunch, its lead is just 1.5 to 2 degrees better than the top performing air coolers. You've probably noticed there's two I haven't mentioned here. First is the D15, which based on its price and history ended up being a disappointment. This isn't surprising though, since according to my interview with Jacob from Noctua, performance on dual CCD AM5 designs was identified as one of the original D15's shortcomings. The other cooler is the Frost Spirit V3, which ended up with shockingly good cooling performance, like 
240 millimeter AIO levels at some points. If we normalize this all down to a constant 38 decibels, the 7950X's 95 degree limit is obviously giving these results an artificial ceiling. So let's switch up the clock speeds to see how much of a difference there really is. All right, let's bring all the coolers up because this proves exactly what I said months ago about busting Ryzen 7000 cooling myths. While the 240 millimeter AIO does technically give the best results, the Peerless Assassin, Phantom Spirit, AK620, Assassin 3, and Frost Commander all come within less than 50 megahertz of it. And the Frost Spirit even manages to win at two decibel points. And look, even though they're in the lower end of the chart, the Assassin 4, D15, U12A, and Fuma 3 all manage to keep the 7950X above five gigahertz. So nowhere near its 4.5 gigahertz base frequency. So yeah, there are good, better, and the best here. But with less than 100 megahertz separating both extremes, you aren't losing much if you can't find or afford one of the top coolers. The next step of this video is probably what most of you guys who are watching this video are going to be using your computer for. And that's not pounding it like it owes you money with a multi-threaded workload. Instead, you're going to be using it for gaming. And honestly, this is very important to take into account. Today's games are not going to be putting a massive load on today's multi-threaded CPUs. Rather, the biggest challenge for these coolers is going to be handling the increase in heat inside of their ambient environment with the GPU just dumping all of its heat into its local vicinity. And the other thing I want to mention here is that we're going to be using a 7700X because in our testing, the 7700X was actually the hottest running CPU of the bunch when gaming. Anyways, let's add the AIO and the U12A and what we now see is a pretty wide temperature delta of 9 degrees between them. The FUMA 3 on the other hand starts off slow but then manages to pull pretty far ahead of the Noctua, which is good news when you consider Scythe's $50 price point for this thing. On the flip side of that coin, given its $100 price, I think this test ends up hurting the Assassin 4 the most. Its unique fan layout causes it to struggle with the higher case temperatures produced by gaming. The AK620 actually outdoes it by significant margin too. And then there's the Frost Spirit, Peerless Assassin, and Frost Commander around the same zone. Meanwhile, if you wanted to get as close as possible to the AIO, well, the D15s and Assassin 3s raw thermal mass helps them power through higher ambient temperatures. Ironically though, while it might not be the biggest cooler here, the Phantom Spirit just hangs in there, matching up with the big boys at every single decibel point. And does this almost 10 degree delta between the U12A and LT520 actually mean anything when it comes to the one thing that matters? frame rates. No, it really doesn't since it leads to a less than 2% difference in one of the more CPU taxing games we tried. So while getting much lower temperatures is certainly nice, they ultimately don't matter in the most important metric for a gaming PC, at least not in this situation. So where do all of these results leave us? And I think a lot of people who have been watching the last year of CPU cool reviews here on Hardware Canucks have one major question, and that is why. Why are some of these coolers that perform so bloody well on the Intel side of the equation actually struggling to get middle of the pack results when switching to some AM5 CPUs? The answer to that is pretty straightforward. It just comes down to platform variants and how each cooler is specifically designed. Take the FUMA 3, for example. I expressed my concerns to Scythe and their testing reflects ours. Their newest cooler tends to perform better versus the competition on Intel's 13th gen CPUs than on AM5. Change the platform and results can and will change. Simple as that. I think this points to why it's so important to get your reviews from a large cross-section of sources. There isn't one definitive source when it comes to cooler reviews. Different setups will obviously yield very different results, and not everyone might apply to your specific situation. Ultimately, it's our intent to give you what we believe is the most complete and current perspective in our CPU cooler reviews. So I am going to make the commitment right here that going forward, we are going to include both AMD and Intel results in every single one of those reviews across six different 
processor types. Now, what about my recommendations here? And for a lot of you who can't access thermal right coolers for a fair price, this might not be good news for you. So right at the top of my list, I am going to say for AM5, the new thermal right Phantom Spirit is hands down, price to performance, the best option you can currently find. It's followed pretty closely actually by the Peerless Assassin and the Frost Spirit V3. Now, if you can't find any of those or they're absolutely hideously expensive, I would actually say the Deepcool AK620 provides almost as good bang for your buck. And to a lot of people, this thing right here, it actually looks a lot better. So I guess that's pretty much it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see similar videos, like it, please let me know down in the comments below exactly what you are looking for. I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and I will definitely see you in the next one. Have a great day guys.